Howdy, howdy. In this video, we're going to unbox and set up the Snapmaker U1 3D printer and give my initial thoughts on the printer so far. What you are seeing is a 10 times speed up of my unboxing and setup live stream that I did. Overall, the packaging was pretty good. Everything stayed in place. And I felt that is one part that they did a really good job. First, we just had to remove all the tape. And then there's the filament that it came with. It's a white, black, red, and yellow. Just enough to make the dragon that is preloaded on the printer. Once you get all the packaging removed, you're able to um, go through and remove all of the tape that's associated with it and the plastic film. The box inside includes some of the necessary tools that you're going to need. as well as the tool heads and other necessary parts, and the manual. The manual is pretty well put together and very detailed with lights. With colors, I mean. So all you have to do is follow it, remove some necessary screws that have some arrows associated with it. annoying part of this is there's several spots that the Allen key that they provide doesn't fit in very well, which is why you see me struggling a little bit here. From there, I had to remove two screws that were in the front and back of the plate that held the plate in. That way there was no shifting during movement. that's removed, remove the rest of the tape that I was missing, and make sure you're careful because there are a few panels that do not want to hold the tape too much. Then we had to put the plate back on, and add the filament feeder to the sides, just plug it in pop it in. It stays on pretty good. There's a way to remove it by just squeezing it from the underside and then it releases. From there we're going to go with the PTFE tubes. It's going to have both 4mm and 6mm tubes. With the 4mm going from the filament feeder all the way up, and then the 6mm tubes will be used after. From here we're going to put the spool holders on. Uh, there is numbers to uh, place it in the right spot, so just make sure you follow along. And then we have the little uh, purge. Uh, disposal um, for the small amount of purge that we do get here. <clears throat> there is a special tool head that has a label on it. Make sure you use that one to place in the first position. The rest of them, the position does not matter. And you do need to make sure that you flip it away from the red. So in the first one, you flip it to the left, whereas the second, third, and fourth, you flip it to the right. That way it is able to latch in there. Good. From here, it has us loosen a few of the screws on the tool head and just kind of move it all around the printer twice. That way it is 
able to, I guess, calibrate it or make sure that all the belts are good. Okay. From here, this is where you plug in the cable. Ignore what I am doing because I am actually plugging it into the incorrect spot, as you'll see in a minute. Um, that's one part where I did not pay attention to the image good enough. I needed to place it right in front of the PTFE to us. Whereas I'm currently placing this adapter piece right onto the tool bag. Here you'll notice I figured it out, and you're able to place it over, screw it in, and it stays in place pretty good. I wasn't able to screw it into the tool head, and that's how I knew I had done it wrong. We're going to do the other three ports. Those are some pretty long screws, so the cable is not going anywhere. Make sure you tighten it afterwards. From here, you plug it into the tool head directly in front, and then you need to use the screws to tighten it into the tool head. This is necessary because there will be a lot of movement in the tool head. From there, you're going to take the 6mm PTFE tubes. There is one that has a notch on one side. We're going to place the smooth side directly in the back, and the notched end is going to go directly into the tool head. And make sure that your cables do not get tangled in the process. find the little adapters that hold the cables together, and you're going to snap it on the front, the back, and the middle of each cable. This one keeps all the tubes in place, especially during the movement of the tool heads. From here, we're ready to start, so you will power it on and go through the initial setup process. It's going to have you connect to your Wi-Fi. And then from there, it's going to proceed the initial calibration. The calibration it's going to go through is going to be the tool head calibration and then the bed calibration. Now, it does include a cleaning tool as each tool head goes through its calibration process. It will bring it to the front of the printer for you to just give it a light cleaning of the nozzle during the calibration process. From there, once it's finished, we remove the bed and proceed with the calibration with the plate removed.
go through each tool head as it does the calibration. Once it finishes, it will lower for you to place the plate back in. And it proceeds with a final calibration. This is where it goes across the entire plate. Overall, the calibration does take about 25 minutes to complete. Once finished, it's going to have you place the filament in. Of note, I had to snip off the ends of the filament for it to feed in good. From there, it's going to detect the filament. And you're going to be prompted to do the first print. You are prompted with an option to do a flow calibration and a heated bed calibration. I recommend doing that, but that does add about 20 minutes to the print time. From what I understand, this is something that they are working on and should not, should be sped up in the future. Once it goes through the flow calibration for each tool head, then it's going to proceed to do the heated bed. <clears throat> so that's finished. Once the heat event calibration is finished, it will proceed to print. I'm doing a half plate line before starting to print. This part of the printing is only done at 500%. Five times speed instead of ten times speed. It places down the first layer and then is transitioning to yellow. Overall, the tool change takes about eight seconds for it to go from one color to the next color. Each time it does hit the purge tower, with the first layer of the purge tower taking longer than the rest.
I'm going to go about two layers deep in the live stream. Before I end it for the three hour track. I'll show you how it looks at the end. All right, the Snapmaker has arrived and has been set up. And it has finished.